We're rolling. Hi, my name is Rory, and you're watching the Sam Mo Show. <laughs> <laughs> Did I frighten you? Ah, excellent! Good evening, Sand Martians! I'm your Count with the Sand Most, Count Cleveland! Thank you for inviting me into your phones! I've been told this podcast sucks! Ah, ah, ah! Welcome to the Sand Most Show's Halloween Spooktacular! Ah, ah, ah! Tonight's victim, I mean guest! Tonight's guest, who I will hopefully have for dinner sometime. Ah, ah, ah. Please, welcome, Miss Rory Pratt. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, that's enough of that. Alright. Rory, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. No problem. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. The cold weather's kind of knocked my allergies into kick a little bit, mm-hmm. but I'm doing good. That's good. So, are you excited for, for the most fantastic holiday of the entire year? Oh, 100%. I have had my costume picked out for, like, a hot minute. You're going against, what, a flapper, right? Yeah. You said that earlier? Oh, very, very 19, 20s, 1930s aesthetic. It's going to be good. I feel yeah. like it's going to be good. I'm going to this cheap hopper for Halloween, because I've already owned that Stranger Things shirt. So, I'm like, well, I might as well just go buy a fake police badge and a mustache and hairpiece for it, because yeah. actually, last weekend I went as a... <laughs> When it was Batman, because my, my dad um, had a costume from a couple of years ago, and he's like, oh, you should totally wear it. Actually, funny enough, he found it in uh, the dumpster. Well, no, it was in the, shouldn't say the dumpster. <laughs> One of the neighbors was trying to throw it away. They, like, left it on the curb, and my dad was like, oh, another man's trash is another man's treasure. And so that's how we got a Batman costume, and I, I wore it. Um, definitely, thankfully, didn't smell like garbage anymore. But... Um, I don't know, because I had like the fake muscle pads and stuff, but um, there was no covering or padding in the groin area, so I ended up with spandex. I was like, oh, I feel very exposed right now, man. Like, I feel <laughs> mildly violated. Yeah, I was like, geez, like, I feel objectified walking in here. I don't think anything's going to top your Post Malone costume from oh, last the year, Post though. Malone costume. That was, was amazing. <laughs> I love that one so much. I wanted to do it again, but it was a lot of time got put into it. And I remember because I had a test that next morning. I didn't. It was a quiz. It was a pot. It was a quiz or whatever it was. It wasn't a whole test. But I remember because I was so hungover the next morning. I literally got out of bed, threw on a baseball cap. I still had the face tats and everything on. I was like, I sat down because I remember I hated that class's overhead lighting because it gave me such a bad headache. So I was sitting there like in hell. And, you know, the people next to me were like, oh, it looks like you had fun last night. I was like, shut up. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't want to talk about it. I was just sitting there. God bless not having Friday classes yeah. this year. Yeah. Cause, ugh. Yeah. Um, Halloween's going to be on a Friday next year, right? I f- it- tech- no. Yeah. It'll be on a Saturday, I think, because it's a leap year. Presidential elections are always on leap year, so it'll be a leap oh. year. Huh. I'll have a Saturday Halloween then. That's good. That'll be fine. And definitely no classes. Yeah. I mean, as long as you don't have to get up and go to church the next morning, <laughs> you'll be fine. But my roommates are still trying to figure out what they want to be, and they're trying to do, like, DIY, like, at-home costumes. They don't got a lot of time left. Yeah. I was like, guys, we're having a thing tomorrow. Like, mm-hmm. y'all need to figure this out. But one of them has decided that she's going to be The Rock, but, like, oh. a feminine version of The Rock. Uh-huh. So she's going to do, like, a full face of makeup, but, mm-hmm. like, that one where he's, like, wearing the fanny pack and chain and everything. Oh, yeah. I did that for my birthday. <laughs> I had to back in the face. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, I'm going to be, like, a feminine version of The Rock. And I was like... The crystal. <laughs> <laughs> the crystal, perfect. But, or any kind of other the gem precious stuff. gem, yeah. <laughs> so we were joking about that. And then one of them dressed up as Chucky today mm-hmm. for because like, she had to dress up for a class. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, that's fun. And mm-hmm. then she's like, I don't know if I'm going to do this t- again tomorrow for our party or if I'm just going to like show Wait up it. and <laughs> figure it out. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, you've got 12 hours to figure that out. <laughs> so it happen, yeah. Gee, yeah. Uh, you see, he calls his daughter the pebble, right? <laughs> Yes. I think that's adorable. Who's the celebrity that, like, refuses to release his children's names, so he calls them, like, Hot Dog? Does he? <laughs> I haven't heard of that. I, have, I can't 
cannot remember who it is, but it is so funny to me. That's honestly a smart move. I, I, I could get that. So it was like a picture of like him and his son, and it was like so and so and his son hot dog. <laughs> it's like, it's like, is it, they blur out the face too, or are they just no, not, like he, oh. they just don't want to release his name because they don't want him to like be harassed at school or whatever. But I mean, if you're in a picture with the celebrity's <laughs> Instagram, there it's somebody's eventually be like, hey, it's that, that looks like you. That, that's you, hot dog. His name's actually Hot Dog. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> really didn't Michael Jackson name one of his kids like Blanket or something? I have no idea. But that that'd be something I would do if I ever had kids. Like my cats' names are Sage and Jupiter. Like what's to say I'm not gonna name my kid like Tupperware or some shit? Just like don't that. make it like a. Uh, God, what are those? Like, it's that picture online. Oh, where it's it's like the dressed cross, up as that cross. costume. Yes, <laughs> yes. What, what was the name? It was like it was like <laughs> Michaela, but it was like M A K E L E I G H, and I was yeah, like, it's like oh, Michaela, what? That's, cursed <laughs> yeah oh please those parents are the worst to just give them the weirdest of names <laughs> oh but anyway it's it's spooky season and i understand that you you gave a speech today in your yes. communications class on on some murders yes so it was... spill it spill the blood so okay gruesome trigger warning lots of like it's about murder so like if that upsets people you're warned yeah but um, so there's this family who had like the parents had recently gotten divorced. So the mom had rented out this cabin in Keddie mm-hmm. and it was like a mom, two daughters and three brothers mm-hmm. who were living there like full time. And then they had a couple of family friends come over one weekend to like hang out with them, stay the and night. Where's this, where's this at? I believe in California. I think it's Keddie, California. OK, but I could be wrong. Um, cause everything that I searched up just said Ketty. It didn't say like where it was. I'm going to Google that while you're talking about it right now. So this family, they go and like live in this cabin and she's barely making enough money from unemployment checks to like mm-hmm. pay for this cabin and pay for groceries and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. cause she's also paying for divorce lawyers and oh, all family, of this stuff. Splitting up? Yeah. Yeah. So the dad was abusive and was like taking it out on the mom and like older Ooh. son. Yeah. Yeah. It was not not good, but mm-hmm. so they lived in this cabin, which was cabin twenty eight, and uh, the daughter Sheila Sharp had gone to stay at a family friend, like a friend's house in the area, not terribly far, mm-hmm. but was coming back that next morning, and um, a couple of so she was she was gone. Uh, their family friend Diana Wingate, and then I believe it was either her son or one of the younger boys, fa- like friends, mm-hmm. was staying with them that night as well. So in the cabin was the mom Sue Sharp, the oldest son John Sharp, Diana Wingate, the two younger sons, and their family friend, mm-hmm. like the younger son's friend. And that when Sheila came home the next morning, she found her mom Sue, um, Diana, and John bound with electrical wire and medical tape, stabbed to death, and beaten with a hammer. Like, she walked in, and this place obviously looked like a murder scene. Like, it was blood everywhere. Like, they had minor defensive wounds, and I mean, like, minor. Like, a small cut or scrape from, Mm -hmm. like, trying to fight back, but they had all been knocked out before they were, like, stabbed. So, um... She obviously calls the police. It's like 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. And this is in 1981 when this happened. Mm-hmm. So she calls the police. The three boys are in their bedroom, like, mm-hmm. unharmed. Mm-hmm. And they're in there, like, in the living room. So it's imagine, like, you're in your own apartment and you're in your living room. Mm-hmm. And then, like, your little brother is in, his like, your bedroom. Yeah. Like, it's clearly not very far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they were completely fine, unharmed, like, completely safe. But the second oldest daughter, Tina was missing Mm -hmm. so there was um three suspects that they had in mind that were like the three main suspects the ex-husband so their father um they thought it could have been him because he had a history of abuse however he was over a thousand miles away whenever Mm -hmm. the case like whenever the murder happened so he was eventually like dismissed as a suspect and then there was tina's teacher who was a convicted child molester Mm -hmm. yeah And then he had pictures of Tina, like, all over his house, all over his office. He was eventually, like, dismissed as a suspect because he had a solid alibi. Yeah, but, like, shouldn't they at least get... I mean, I guess they can't find... They can't hold him accountable because they weren't looking for, like, 
child pornography, right? Yeah. So since they weren't looking for child porn, yeah, they couldn't like keep him for that. So they had to uh, eventually did a like separate investigation for that. Hopefully, yeah. But he got his like teaching license revoked and all of that fun yeah. stuff. Yeah, but, understandably. Um, Tina was still like the reason they thought it could have been him is because Tina went missing. Like they had mm-hmm. no idea where she was, and then the other three were murdered. So the theory was with that was that in like his attempt to kidnap her, he ran into the mom, Diana, and John. Mm-hmm. And they tried to fight back, which is how they got the defensive wounds, but he had come like prepared to like fight back. Yeah. But the murder was so gruesome that they were like, there's no way that that's what happened. Mm-hmm. So he was eventually dismissed as a suspect for that. And then their third suspect, that's the one that I personally believe is the one who did it, mm-hmm. but um, never really got charged for it because he, it's a long story, but basically he was their neighbor. He lived in cabin 26. So he was just down the street from them mm-hmm. and he had been abusing his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Marty smart and his wife's name is Marilyn. So Marty had been abusing Marilyn and Sue was like, Hey Marilyn, like you should take the kids and leave. Like you can mm-hmm. stay with us for the time being until you like get back on your feet. Like that's not fair for him to like be treating you like that. Like she had just gotten out of an abusive relationship herself. It was very like, she understood what she was going through. Mm -hmm. So eventually Marilyn did like start thinking about leaving and like brought it up to Marty and Marty was like, I'm going to like hurt whoever said this to you. Like I'm not hurting you, all this Uh, stuff. But like because of the proximity of their cabins, you could hear and see what was happening. hmm. So like clearly there was like proof of abuse. And she had gone to the police about it a couple times and eventually, like, dropped the charges or whatever it was yeah. because, like, she didn't really want it to be, like, a huge ordeal. And Wait, then, what year is this in? 1981. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. It was before um, the huge shift in policing towards, like, making it mandatory to press charges for domestic violence cases. Okay, yeah. So, um, but <laughs> they got in a huge fight about it. And eventually, um, he was also, like released as a suspect because he didn't like he had a solid alibi quote unquote i think it's what was was the alibi i don't even know everything i looked at just said he had a solid alibi but it was always in quotes like Mm. solid alibi i was like okay Mm. sure he has a solid alibi especially with their apartments being so close yeah like they could if they could see the uh was the keddie family right yeah like the sharp family the sharp family yeah sorry they could see them like coming and going like he could probably learn their the routines, the routines. Stuff. I mean that. Mm. But it didn't explain the disappearance of Tina. Oh, okay. So they were kind of like, okay, either there's two separate things going on here, or this is all one big thing, and Tina tried to run away, and then the killer got her, and like whatever. Mm. But um, later, he admitted to a VA counselor that he had killed Sue, but he never oh. said anything about Tina, John, or Diana. Hmm. So everybody was kind of like, okay, well that's weird. But the VA counselor didn't come out about anything until after he had died. Yeah. So it was kind of like another thing. Oh, I forgot. He actually, the reason he got um, released as a suspect is because he had passed a lie detector test, uh, which, as most of us know, are not used in they're, they're not policing anymore. Well, they're not reliable. Because they're not reliable, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was... So, they, so we still don't know exactly what happened. Yeah, so the case still remains unsolved. But um, in 1984, <laughs> they found Tina's skull outside of cabin 18, Whoa. which is like four miles down the road from cabin 28. Whoa. Yeah. They so, did, just dug up? Or? No, so somebody called into the police station and was like, hey, Tina Sharp's skull is outside cabin 18. How'd they know it was her skull? They That's t- what p- police don't know, is they're like, how did you know it was Tina? So they had gotten this call and... Oh, so they didn't even bring it to forensics before they... Yeah, mm. they didn't even bring it to forensics. Like, it was somebody called in and was like, hey, Tina's skull is outside of cabin 18 if you want to find it. And they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so police went out there and dug it up and of course, like, sure enough, it was out there. Ooh. So they took it to forensics and this person was like, adamant that it was tina and after forensics came back and like everything it was tina's skull wow they matched it with dental records so i was like wow that's jeez insane so that was three years later and then bloody fingerprints from the like crime scene are being reanalyzed now Mm -hmm. um with laser technology okay so they're trying to like whatever you see on like csi and criminal minds and cis stuff like that zoom and enhance (laughs) zoom and enhance again (laughs) there's his license plate number we've got him (laughs) yeah they've got their abby on it like I'm going to figure out these fingerprints if it's the death of me. (laughs) But um, 
they're reanalyzing that. And then the cabin was torn down in 2004 because a bunch of people were going and like going in there illegally, trespassing, trying to stay overnight in this cabin. And they hadn't rented it out since because obviously nobody's going to want to stay in it. Like yeah. a family was brutally murdered here. And, and they Ketty, never caught the killer. <laughs> yeah. Ketty is a terribly small town. Like yeah. imagine San Marcos, but without all the college kids. Ugh. Like smaller than that. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> It is a very, very small town. Yeah, so they never caught the killer, huh? Yeah, it still remains unsolved. This, this mystery will remain unsolved. Actually, that's the reason I did this oh. uh, case is because I was like, I'm the most undecisive person in the yeah. world. So I had like makeup and like tattoos and like a true crime thing mm-hmm. and like an unsolved case. And I put yeah. them all on a spinning wheel and it picked unsolved. Oh, and really? I was like, okay, well, I don't know what unsolved case to do. So I went to BuzzFeed Unsolved's nice. YouTube page and I looked at all the numbers of cases, like, cause they have like a playlist of all yeah. of them. So it was like one through 46 or whatever. And I was like, okay, pick a number one through 46. And it came up with the one that there was related go. to the Ketty Cabin murders. But I, it's, love, I love BuzzFeed Unsolved. There so do I. A fantastic group. Have you seen their season finale? Uh, no, the, the I'm like halfway one? through it. Oh, it's... It's so I think it's, it's right I, outside I, of my hometown, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, no. so I used to live in North Carolina, mm. and Charleston, South Carolina is about an hour or so from where I used to yeah. live, so it's not terribly far. Have you ever visited far. that prison? I have not. No. I moved here when I was six, it, so yeah. I was a little <laughs> little young to be into murder. Yeah, I was but. actually. I, I, we lived in South Carolina for a little bit, uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, okay. and uh, before we moved here, ultimately. But yeah, we... I don't know where I was going with that, but <laughs> yeah, I just, but I've, I've never, heard, this first I've heard of this prison place, Same. but I mean, it sounds pretty brutal stuff, but I mean, it, it was, they, they definitely found some stuff there. There was like, they apparently saw an apparition and they have it on camera. It's, uh, it, I don't think so, but I'm also like team Shane. Like I'm not really a big believer in ghosts and spooky stuff, but I mean, it was pretty convincing. The thing is, it was like, it was going across the room. I was like, oh, it's probably a car headlights going through the window, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because it was only like half of it. It was was from a really weird angle, too, because they were trying to get the whole stairwell. And so it's at like the bottom of the screen. So part of it's cut off by the next floor of the stairwell. So I don't know. I don't think it's decisive, but like, this proves ghosts exist. It was spooky, though. But the one thing that bothered me the most was they literally have apartment complexes across the street. Just there. Yeah, and, like, like there's this just, abandoned, like, a quote-unquote abandoned yeah. prison. I mean, they do tours and stuff. It's still, I'm like, how could you live next to this, like, dank old prison? Like, well, I lived next to a um, cemetery last year in my dorm. Mm-hmm. Like, you could see it from one of my friend's rooms. Yeah, I guess. Actually, we went to one of the cemeteries uh, a little while ago um, for my friend Nikki. She was doing, for her, like, life and death class. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, I had to just go around... A graveyard and you know i guess pick out different years and stuff just i i don't know why but that was part of the project we all went with her because we're like oh spooky season right and it, it it was actually kind of sad because the graveyard was actually in really bad condition Ooh. like a lot of gravestones were either like broken or you know run down or some some places they literally they buried them but they couldn't afford a gravestone so they just have like a little like plaque right there or something some of this stuff's sad man we saw it. you know I, i'm not even gonna get into some of the stuff because that wouldn't be a fun podcast experience. But yeah, it was just, I was kind of like depressing. I was like, oh, this isn't spooky. It's just kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I'm i very weird about going to like graveyards and stuff. Like in Louisiana, it's very common that people will go in there and like tour it and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is like very different than Texas. Like yeah. you have to be like a family member or a friend of somebody who died there for a lot of places to even let you in. Mm-hmm. And it's just very overall weird. But I'm very like spirits are real and like as long mm-hmm. as you respect them they won't mess with you yeah that's my thing too like i'm i'm team shane in the sense of like oh ghost silly i don't buy that but also i'm not gonna do anything like he like tries to like provoke spirit i'm like yeah i'm not gonna this is my bridge now yeah. <laughs> i'm dancing a bridge goat man yeah no i'm not like that i'm like i'm just gonna exist parallel to these spirits that exist i'm not looking for them i'm not gonna taunt them i'm just gonna do my own thing and you do your own, that you go haunt stuff, I'm going to go live my life. <laughs> I'll see y'all on the other side. <laughs> yeah, like, if you're here, like, I'm just going to leave you alone. If you're here, I'm just, this is your space. I'm going to go home. <laughs> yeah, that's my whole thing. Like, yeah. I'm so I hear, like, a, get out. to be like, you got it, man. <laughs> like, Peace. I'm Enjoy not, your like, space. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, that's my bad. I intrude on your space. Like, I'm not going to be like, let's split up, gang. Like, let's go. No, I'm like, all right, you heard, you heard the man. Let's, let's go. <laughs> 
let's peace out. Yeah. I'm very, like, into... Like, I'm very into, like... I guess you would call it, like, witchcraft, which is, like... Yeah. A lot of people in the Wiccan community don't like that word, mm-hmm. but, like, how else are you going to describe it? Divination, I guess, is a better mm-hmm. word. But um, I believe in, like, saging an apartment or a place, like, you move into, like, whenever you get there to clear out the energies of the last people. But um, the people who lived there before us are very, like aggressive people Mm -hmm. so like our front door was broken when we moved in and that we've gotten it fixed since i was Mm -hmm. telling you about this earlier but it was like clearly somebody had kicked it in like it was slanted on the door frame and it was it was a mess Mm -hmm. two of the bedroom doors have holes where somebody punched them like Mm -hmm. broke the door wow that are covered in like it seriously looks like a piece of paper is covering where it was fixed like it's yeah not good yikes um but I'm very into, like, saging an apartment, so cleansing the space. Are you part of, like, the, I guess, Wiccan community? Or? Yeah. I, oh, very cool. Yeah, there's actually a pagan student fellowship on campus. Really? Yeah. Okay, very cool. I was, I was part of it last year, and they're, like, really nice people. It's just mm-hmm. it conflicted with my schedule too much. Yeah. And then I just eventually stopped going, and then now I'm kind of just, like, on my own yeah. and do my own thing. Because I know I, they have, like, witches of San Marcos and stuff mm-hmm. like that, like... I've always wanted to just interview one. This guy, I just, I'm just curious about it. Like my, my thing with like spiritual stuff, like I don't believe in it, but I'm also fascinated by it. Like yeah. it's just like cool to study and learn about. Yeah. But yeah, that's always like one of my like definitely ones to cross off a list of like people have a po- I want to have a witch on the podcast. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, no, I, my my girlfriend's kind of into like tarot cards and stuff like that. I know that. how to read tarot. Yeah. Like I'm learning how to read tarot, and then my grandma knows how to do like pendulum readings, so oh, she's been nice. trying to teach me how to do that. Mm-hmm. So I got she got me a pendulum when she was up here last weekend. Yeah. So that was exciting. Oh, very cool. Yeah. But I've I've got like this huge thing of crystals and like it's my altar, but like yeah, we don't have much space in our apartment, so I have like one mm-hmm. of those three tiered IKEA carts. Oh, nice. <laughs> with all of my stuff. This is my witching cart. <laughs> it's great because then I can like move into the living room for yeah. our Halloween party and be like, anybody want a tarot reading? Who wants to do witchy stuff. <laughs> it works. Yeah, hey, it's cool stuff. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, actually, my girl, her, hers is like a little crow cemetery, like little crows and cute stuff. I I, I like it. It was spooky but like you know little crows she did a tarot reading for me i, I hardly remember what it said but it wasn't bad so it probably it's probably yeah. i was like yeah sure i've had some tarot readings where it was like your boyfriend's a dick and i'm like ah <laughs> yikes you guys need to break up but then like my friend is like super involved in her relationship like loves her boyfriend to death yeah. but like from an outsider's perspective it's very like unhealthy mm, so yeah. i'm sitting there like i've been in an unhealthy relationship like yeah. i know what that's like so i'm just like <laughs> i can't oh. define it but i i know it when i see it and yeah but that's her <laughs> she asked me to do a love reading on her and i was like okay sure like mm-hmm. knowing that they were having some relationship issues i was like sounds good and i lay out the cards and it's like a whole bunch of like it like this is gonna go wrong. You guys are gonna have like a super bad conversation that's gonna lead to your breakup, and you're Ooh. gonna be devastated. And I was like, "Huh." What's been a bad read? Let's try it again. Let's try this again. But yeah. I I felt so bad. And like one of the main things that you're not supposed to do in a reading is like lie about it. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I cannot break this poor girl's heart. Yeah. Like I can't do that to her. She's already going through it. So yeah. I'm like, you guys are gonna have a rough conversation, and like. It's not going to, like, necessarily lead to the end. Because, like, tarot, the whole thing is, like, it gives you, like, a path, if you, like, a warning if you stay on that same path mm-hmm. of, like, if you don't change what you're doing, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. If you do change what you're doing, this is a possible outcome yeah. still, but not as likely. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, just be aware that, like, this isn't good. And then I got the death card, which signifies change. Mm-hmm. And I was like, there's going to be a huge change in your life. And I'm not entirely... I was like, I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I was like, ah. That's above my pay rate. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, man. Um, so you're talking about your new apartment and mm-hmm. everything, but you said your old apartment was also haunted, right? My old do- my dorm last year, oh, yeah. yeah we lived right across from the cemetery. So... Clearly, if there's just a literal road in between, like, yeah. spirits can, like, come across. And mm-hmm. it's it's going to happen, like, yeah. no matter what. I remember on your on the podcast last year, you yeah. were talking to one of your friends who also lived in the same dorm as me. Oh, was it uh, Falls and Sayers? I was at uh, St. Gabriel. St. Gabriel, yeah, 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 yeah. And one, uh, they had ghost issues, too. And I was like, wow, that's kind of creepy that it's not just us. But yeah. um, my roommate last year was trying to, like, get all the wrinkles out of her pride flag that she was putting up in our mm-hmm. room. 
and it kept falling no matter what we put on it like it kept Jeez. falling off the ladder that we had it on these ghosts are bigots so we no this is it's a funny story we created like a whole backstory <laughs> yeah. for this ghost uh-huh. but um, we had it like duct taped on there i was sitting up there with my arms on it like holding it down and it would still fall really like, it was just it was a mess so it was a big problem but mm-hmm. eventually we got it like straightened out and we put it up and we're like okay clearly there's like some sort of ghost like fucking with us in here like yeah it's just it's there's no way it's not so we <laughs> we named him brian brian okay I we gave him that. a name which like you're not supposed to do because yeah. that like can make them want to stay yeah so we we're like okay his name is brian and we started like joking about a backstory for him so he was like he's like bisexual and he came out to his parents and they were like no you're not you have to go to like a and M and like go to the super conservative <laughs> area. Sorry to anybody who's from A and M who's listening, but like, it's very conservative <laughs> compared yeah, to here. Yeah. And they were very like homophobic. You can't like you're not by like that's not a thing. Like mm-hmm. all this stuff. And we we're like, okay, whatever. Like, that's his backstory. He's like from a very homophobic so he's just, family. He's just closeted. At this yeah, point. he's closeted. So but, then yeah. we were like, okay, well then eventually he probably like transferred here, or, like mm-hmm. did his masters here or whatever, yeah. and like eventually died here in San Marcos because yeah. of the. Um, graves nearby Uh and we were like okay so he's just in the closet like he was just mad that like we were both open and out about like our sexuality and stuff he's just jealous yeah and he was just mad about it and then eventually so my roommate had these like glow in the dark star stickers Mm -hmm. that she got from Home Depot yeah like the ones that you put on your ceiling when yeah. you're a little kid. Yeah. She had a bunch of those, and so she wrote Brian on one of them and stuck it on the ceiling in our closet. <laughs> that's, dang- that's that's a dangerous game. Yeah, but eventually he stopped leaving us alone. Oh, he, really? So yeah, he, be, after oh. we did that, he stopped leaving us alone. But before you that, him out. You yeah, him out. we were like, okay, I mean, like here's something for you to like actually take hold of. This is yours. This is your closet. <laughs> like you can hang out in here. In the closet. <laughs> in the closet. <laughs> like all he your was life. comfortable. He stayed in there. He hung out in there. It was fine. <laughs> like he did all of his life. <laughs> But there was other times that we had... So our, the way our room was set up was that we both had tapestries up. Like, other mm-hmm. than the pride flag, we actually had, like, tapestries. And the way Callie's was set up is that it was, like, right above her bed. So, like, if mm-hmm. it fell, it would fall, like, out onto her bed. Mm-hmm. And then I had mine across from my bed next to our fridge. So if it fell, it would fall on the fridge. Mm-hmm. But every time we would come back from a break, they'd both be, like, perfectly down the side of, like, wherever mm-hmm. they were. Wow. Like... It essentially is if they were like flipped upside down. Yeah. Like there's no way they could have fallen like that naturally. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay. Haunted. He's messing with us. Yeah. Like there's no way. Yeah. That it was weird. But there was that and then a couple of times we had shoes that were like missing. Oh really? Like I had my shoes in my drawer next to my desk. Mm-hmm. And I would open the drawer and I'd have like one shoe sitting on top of the drawer. And then one would be in Callie's drawer. Really? And I'd be like, um, why is my shoe over there? And she's like, I have no clue. I didn't, why would I mess with your shoes? Good point. (laughs) Yeah. So we had like weird incidents like that. And like her clothes would end up on like my bed. Oh, really? No idea how they would get there. Stuff like that. It was very Hmm. weird. Like she'd be gone for a weekend and then I, like the TV would like turn on by itself. That happened a lot. Really? Our TV would just randomly turn on. Really? That's, that's spooky. Yeah, that freaked me out a little bit. There was one night our printer just started going by itself with like pr- papers that we had printed out like months ago coming out. And we were like, so we um. Print B R Y A N. It was very funny. Like, eventually it stopped and we yeah. had, like saged the room and stuff like that. So it wasn't a problem. Like, it wasn't like a huge deal. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like he was trying to like kill us or anything. It was yeah. just. Just jealous of what you had. Yeah. Just, just he just wished he was born in like you know two thousand or something. Yeah. Instead of having to go to A and M. Spooky stuff. All right, we're gonna take a quick break right here, and then uh, I'll be back with some scary stories.
All right, and we are back with some more spooky tales, and I have a haunted tale about Tower Hall. Room 917 of Tower Hall, more specifically. This happened back in uh, the 90s. Uh, one of my teachers, uh, who originally went to Texas, she taught me in high school, um, but she went there and she was telling me about this because she also lived uh, in Tower because that building is archaic. And it looks like a prison. It's It looks like a little Alcatraz. The parking garage there is, is the stuff of nightmares, in my opinion. For real, though. Have you been inside there? Yes, it's yes. miserable. It's got scrapes all over the wall because <laughs> it's too narrow and shit. Oh. My, I drove my friend past there when he came up to visit from Houston, and he mm. was like, what is that building? Why does it look like a psych ward? And I was like, yeah. it's the psych LLC, actually. <laughs> Matter of fact, funny you say that. <laughs> you know how they always like there's buildings on campus that are meant to look like nur- like doctors offices and stuff for like yeah. the nursing majors yeah. and stuff. I feel like that's what they did <laughs> with towers. They're Living like these kids need to look like they live in a psych ward, so we're yeah. going to build this. Welcome to the asylum. <laughs> this is this is what you get. <laughs> but more specifically, room 917 of Tower Hall. It was haunted in the 90s before they got an exorcist in there, right? And so basically my teacher, uh, he lived in room 916, so the one right next to it. And the door next like next to it was always locked. You're supposed to have suite mates. Because well, you have a conjoining bathroom, but they just didn't have suite mates. They didn't question it for a while, but sometimes late at night, they'd hear like heavy scraping on the floor and stuff. So they thought like somebody had to live there. And they kept knocking on the door you know, sometimes, seeing if anybody would open up. They never did. And then they finally asked the RA about it. I said, hey, so who lives next door? And they go, oh, you don't have a roommate. And he goes, I definitely hear like people in there at night and stuff. There's definitely somebody living in there. And they go, no, 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 like they're they're not even on my roster. Like they're not in the building stuff. And um, so so then one night, he hears this like really loud crying through the through the wall, and he hears like a woman crying. And he's like, there's somebody in there right now. So so he knocks on the door, no response. The crying just gets louder and louder. And then he finally goes around and he tries to like look through the people at the door even though it's kind of like you know an inverted mirror he still looks through it and he can barely see somebody kind of like crouched in the corner like just weeping like crying softly and um and he kept knocking he's like hello are you okay are you okay just kept crying in the corner and so eventually he just went back to his room he didn't sleep for the entire night it stopped around 6 a.m the next morning right and so he was like what the hell and so he told his ra and the ra is like i don't know you might want to go talk to uh well, I forget the person above RA, RMs or? Uh, uh, RD resident director. RD re- resident director. So he goes to talk to the resident director at the time, and he's like, hey, you know, I think either somebody's, like, staying in that room temporarily overnight or something or whatever, but there was there was a girl crying in there. And then the guy goes, oh, don't worry about it. I'm sure it's just your imagination or something. He goes, no, I'm serious. Like, I, I saw it, and I heard it last night. And then he says, you know, I've been working – I, I, my, my boss has been working here for about 20 years. He goes, you know, he, there's, there's a story, and I'm not supposed to tell you this. There's a story about that room in Tower Hall where a girl apparently one night threw herself out the window. This is top floor of Tower Hall, and she killed herself, right? She threw herself out the window, but so, and then she was so heartbroken over a breakup with her boyfriend, so she haunts that room now, and she's just constantly crying, and she just can't get over it, and she can't move on. Her spirit can't move on, right? And so... You know, he says, well, what does, he look, what does she look like? And she goes, oh, you know, I, I don't really remember, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my boss tomorrow about it if you really want to know, right? And he says, okay, fine. And so then he, he doesn't hear the crying again that night, right? And, and so another two days go by, and then again, like that weekend, he hears the crying again. He checks in the room, and this time he sees nothing. It's just pitch black in there, like a really deep, just black and he's like, because usually you can at least see the light coming through the window in there, but like it's either blocked out or something, but he can't see anything. It's just black. And then, um, so eventually he finally gets back to the uh, RM, or the, the RD, excuse me. He gets back to the RD and he says, okay, yeah, so he got the full story from his boss. So basically she, she was crying and she was distressed and then she eventually just threw herself out the window and, and she took her own life. And, and so now her spirit haunts the room because they tried filling the room afterwards and it just didn't work because they said they saw her when like they were sleeping, like they thought of sleep paralysis, but they saw this this girl, right? And and so she had like this long black hair and this, and this nice little like, almost like a white dress she was wearing. But the thing that freaked them out the most was that she had these big black empty eyes. And so then that's when my teacher realized, like, 
was she looking back at me when he looked through the wind or through, looked through the people was she staring back through him through the through the people at him damn that's so, creepy yeah spooky story rooms of tower hall scary stories there actually i've heard a lot of um scary stories about text i've heard and the, these were like the ones that you're um oh it was it was like new student orientation leaders mm-hmm. would tell you about there, there were a couple of them I don't remember this one as well, but I remember there was like a frat house or something, a frat that like their house, their entire house burned down. It was built in this really old house and they kept saying they were like seeing or hearing ghosts and stuff and eventually it like burned down one night during a party. And I think a lot of people in it died or whatever. I don't, I don't remember the exact story. If you guys ever run into somebody who runs the new student orientation stuff, go ask them about it. Cause I'm pretty sure like they were all in on it. So I'm pretty sure that was like a great story they would tell, but I, and I don't remember the name of the frat either, but I remember looking it up at the time. And I looked, like, it literally went into, like, a 404 page, like, not found. Like, it was, like, deleted. And I was Yikes. like, ooh, maybe. I was like, first I was like, no way, no way, man. And then after that, I was like, okay, okay maybe. Yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, so there's, they have a lot of spooky stories around San Marcos and stuff. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's a very interesting town. I mean, it it's all very... college kids and then, like, a few people in between and then mm-hmm. a lot of old people. Yeah. So you kind of get that mix of, like, the younger kids who are very, like, I want to know all the scary stuff, yeah. and then the older generations who are like, no, mm-mm. No, you don't. I know you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Are you sure? Yeah. I like the flavor of San Marcos, though, mm-hmm. a lot. It's, it's, it's very unique. Definitely. And, I like, it, it's kind of this weird little middle child between, like, Austin and San Antonio, but I like yeah. it a lot. It's... Yeah, very cool people here. Very historic area, too. Like, you, yeah. they have a lot of old buildings around here. I heard somebody at one point say that, like, LBJ haunts the LBJ statue. Mm, and I was yeah. like, I don't think he would, because I feel like he would be a little offended at how short they made him. Yeah. And, like... He was, like, 6'6". Six, six. He was tall. Yeah. But he always... Did you ever hear that he would always talk about, like, needing extra room in his pants? Oh, yeah. No, he... <laughs> like, constantly. He talked about his dick all the time. Like, all the time. Yeah. I actually remember there like some of the male staffers remember there, like the restroom of the White House. He would literally like stand with his dick out, like while he was like using the urinal, and he, he'd be like, "You ever seen anything that big before?" And they're like, "No, Mr. President, we have we have never seen anything that big before." He would publicly talk in front of like um, news channels and stuff yeah. about how like he needed to like call his tailor because there wasn't enough room yeah. in his pants. Yeah. And I was like. How about you just tuck, dude? If, if, there's, if there's ever been a Texas State graduate that I more <laughs> couldn't be any more proud of, it, it's, it's it's Big Dick LBJ. That's Texas State in general just has big dick energy. Big dick energy. Pete Texas Davidson State. who? Wait, he's from... Oh, I thought they were saying Pete <laughs> Davidson. I was like, what? No. Pete Davidson from Texas State? Pete Davidson's like, the one who started big dick energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like Pete Davidson who? I only know LBJ. Yeah, sorry, only only my boy LBJ. Actually, because that's weird, because I, I don't think he would haunt the statue, because he's just supposed to... If you shake his hand before a test, it's like supposed to be good luck. Mm-hmm. I do that all the time. I used to last year, especially when we'd go in for our English yeah. tests. I'd be like, I did not pay attention or read anything. I actually enjoyed that class a lot. I loved that class. Yeah. Dr. Blair was cool. I loved him. I miss him. I hope he's doing well. <laughs> Dr. Blair, if you're listening, I hope you're having a good time and like you're loving the best life. Of times. Yeah. I remember one time, one of the uh, people I stood next to, we were, we were arguing about it. What was it? The first poem we read by. Um, Oh God, what's his name? He was like the hippy dippy dude. He, like in like the eighteen hundreds. I don't remember, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but he, the the person next to me was like, oh, that was definitely there was definitely homosexual imagery in there, and I was like, no, he's just writing about like nature and stuff, and and then um, oh, what it's on tip my tongue now. I'm thinking about it. it's like it starts with a W. It wasn't Walt Whitman. Was it? I think it was Whitman. It was Whitman. Yeah. Dr. Brown looks like Walt Whitman. Yes. And it's so creepy. It's like that whole thing of, like, Walt Whitman died and then, like, immediately No, no he doesn't, look, he doesn't look like Whitman. Whitman had, like, a really long beard. He looks like a, kind of like an older version of Hemingway. Yes. Yeah, that's who he looked like. Yeah, but no, so it was Walt Whitman and, like, you know, they got to the part where he was writing a poem about, like, bathing with a bunch of other young men and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, when you put it like that, yeah, I'm sure it's a little bit homosexual imagery. And then... Uh, the professor, he goes, yeah. now Walt Whitman was probably gay. <laughs> like He's like, the signs point to, yeah, probably gay. And the immediately your head snaps, I told you. I was like, all right, you got me. I actually, I like that book uh, we read a lot, The Sun Also Rises. Mm-hmm. That was actually a really good book. It was. 
I thought the be- the best ending line for a character ever was Britt Ashley. She's like, you know, I thought it better not to be a bitch. And that was the end of her, like, lines in the entire book. I love that so much. Yeah. Um, it's so creepy how he does look like Ernest Hemingway, though. Yeah. And then Ernest Hemingway died exactly one month before uh, Dr. Blair was born. Do you remember mm. him telling us that? No, I don't remember that It was, part. like, a month and a year or something Spooky. like that. But, like, they, like, he died, like, right before. It's, like, a, they're, like, his death date and, like, his birthday is, like, like one right after yeah. the other. It's so creepy. I wonder if there's just like a, a like a waiting list of like of <laughs> human spirits. Yeah, like, like or not like but like you just like after you die, you just get in line and like each soul like inhabits the next baby that's born kind of thing. It's like Yeah, oh. and then it looks like them. Yeah. It's just like, oh yeah. It's like, oh he's like, who am I getting with? It's like, well, you look a lot like this guy here who's about to be born. Would you would you like to hop in there? I'd be like, sure, yeah. <laughs> I definitely believe in like souls going from like one body to another because like souls technically aren't a thing quote unquote but like mm-hmm. it's like energy they can't be created or destroyed so like yeah. they kind of just transfer bodies so like i feel like my cat sage has my old dog max's soul Aww. because they were both very cuddly very like affectionate mm-hmm. they always knew like if something was wrong yeah so it's very weird that like if i'm upset sage will do the exact same things that max would do when i was upset yeah so she'll like come up and like sit in my lap or like cuddle up to me and like lick me and like make sure i'm okay and i'm like oh mm-hmm cute yeah i don't know if yeah. that's just pets or if it's no no pets are special we don't deserve dogs and cats <laughs> we don't we really don't they're they're the best of the best except for except for my girlfriend's cat salem a, a true terror uh, upon earth one of our cats has an issue jupiter has this issue where she loves to eat tampons mm-hmm. don't know why <laughs> used or unused she will go and find yeah. a tampon and try and eat it yeah. So she's dug through my roommate's trash mm-hmm. so many times and just thrown things everywhere. Yeah. And she'll like drink out of the toilet. I'm like, what is this cat's problem? Mm-hmm. Like, I... <laughs> are you good? <laughs> nice. <laughs> we get some some whales of the dam while we're recording. I hope that I hope that got on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> if not, it's just gonna be like the silence. Are you good? And then we heard a disembodied voice when we're walking down this corridor. <laughs> BuzzFeed Unsolved, where you at? Investigate Alcat Library. <laughs> the amount of weird things that have happened in here. Somebody, I heard a story of, like, somebody who was in one of, like, the study rooms that mm-hmm. has, like, only the top part of the window and not the bottom part. Uh-huh. Like, one of my friends, like, walked by and somebody was, like, getting a blowjob in the room. And I was like, hey. I mean, get it, but, like. Folks get stressed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, get it. Do what you need to do. But, like, in a place with a window? Yeah. Some people, some exhibitionists, man, they, that's like their entire prerogative is like yeah. the publicity of it just does that much more for them. I don't get that at all. Not my thing. Yeah. I feel like that's a little little weird. Yeah. Speaking of exhibitionists, do you, do you keep up with baseball at all? <laughs> Not no. really. Well, but... the, the World Series is going on right now, yeah. so a lot of people are tuned in. And uh, during I feel game... bad. I'm from like the Houston, Houston area. Yeah. I'm not paying attention whatsoever. During uh, game five of the series, two girls behind home plate stood up and like flashed the camera. <laughs> I love and that. And they, they've been officially banned indefinitely for uh, from all future baseball games on the LLB. But <laughs> they, they think it's worthy of it. But just, just titties. Just immediately. <laughs> just, just after like, and here's a 2-1 pitch. And then these girls just stand up and like pull back. And so people in the stands also got pictures. But the funniest one was this guy, like this older guy. He was like, "Yeah," he's like, like crouched to the side, taking a picture, and they're like, "Ew, who is this guy?" <laughs> like, like this guy's being creepy. Everybody else is like, "Oh, okay," but he's like, like uh, he's like, "Wait till the boys back home to see this one, right?" He's like, Ew. "Gotta go back to the nursing home and show yeah. all the fellas this one." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you won't believe what I saw at the Astros game yesterday. <laughs> Oh, I mean, understandably so that they're banned. Like, if you go yeah. streaking in the middle of the game, you get banned too. Yeah, so. that always. I, I've always thought about that. Like, what if, like, at a football game or something like that, this guy's like, "I've got talent. Like, like I'm like really fast. I can like you know dodge anybody." He's like, "What if I go streaking, and I just like start running around the field dodging security guards to prove I can be like a good kick returner for football or some shit?" I was, I was like, "What if that's like the most like bold addition you can ever do?" Yeah. Yeah. Like. Look what if LBJ coach. just started, like, running around? He's like, see, look, I've got a big dick. Just <laughs> streaking at all the football games Hel- Can we get a statue of LBJ helicoptering <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> and but, like, this. a pinwheel. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, would be great. that would be great. 
feel like that's going to be somebody's yeah, gotta, like senior prank. Instead of putting bubbles in the fountain outside of Commons, they're just going to put a pinwheel over LBJ's <laughs> dick. <laughs> so the new ritual is if you spin his dick, you, you, if you helicopter his dick, you get you get good luck on all your exams. Yeah, apparently I, not as people, many people know that, but I was told like that was the thing. Like you had to shake LBJ's hand before mm-hmm. a test. It's helped me. Like I, I, I've yeah, done pretty good on my exams. Times. I was like. LBJ. <laughs> Help me out here, man. Please. There's been a few times. Most of my classes this year are over there, mm-hmm. but it's like a lot of the ones that I have over in that area that aren't like down the hill in like Heinz or uh, Perindalis or whatever mm-hmm. is like in Flowers where we just write essays and turn them yeah. in. So you can't really do that. Yeah. <laughs> but. Jeez. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, God, tomorrow. I'm really excited because uh, Luigi's Mansion 3 comes out with Nintendo Switch. and I got a Switch for my birthday. Yeah, Switch for your birthday. Yes. You should get, have you ever played Luigi's Mansion? No. you got to play it. It I comes want out to. tomorrow. I will. Please. I got Jackbox Party Games, so we'll play that tomorrow, too. Oh, shit, yeah. I got the third one and the fifth one. Okay, so I was thinking about buying those. Are those, are those any good? Yes, like, fun they're party so games? worth it. They're so yeah. much fun. Especially when people have been, like, drinking or smoking. It's oh, just, yeah. It's a thousand times better because okay. everybody's like, uh. <laughs> I have to think now? Yeah. I'm not sober enough for this. Yeah, no, Luigi's Mansion 3 comes out tomorrow, and that was one of my first video games, like, ever, when I got my GameCube, because it, it came out with the GameCube, and, um, actually, one of my, uh, fond childhood memories was, because that game scared me too much. I mean, I was, like, five. Dude, I was terrified of Courage the Cowardly Dog. That, that show is weird. That, that yeah. show is very weird. I couldn't watch Codename Kids Next Door, either, because really? that scared me for some reason. I don't know. Don't know why. I remember Courage Cowardly Dog scared me. It was the King Ramsey episode, I think, where like Eustace steals like these ancient slabs and like it's like you know what I'm talking about. He's out in like the field. Yeah. He's like this weird like CGI thing. He's like return the slabs. It, I, it just uncanny valley. Like, it just bugged me out. Uh uh-uh. uh. There's also um, the Grim Adventures of Bill and Mandy. I couldn't watch that show at oh, night because it show. scared me. My parents hated me watching it. They're like, "Are you watching that garbage again?" I was like, "Yes." I, am. I could watch it during the daytime and I loved it, but like yeah. after like 8 p.m., my parents were like, ah, and we're turning that off. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was funny, especially as we've gotten older. Like it's also mm-hmm. gotten pretty funny too. There's there's been some scenes where like people repost them on Twitter. I was like, can we? Do you believe we watched this shit as kids? Like and this went over our heads. And like Foster Home for imaginary friends. Oh, that was one of my favorite shows. Same. Yeah. Yeah. I love my favorite quote from the show is it's noon 30. People are trying to sleep. <laughs> Oh, was it with Duchess, right? With the... <laughs> it was Blue who oh, said it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but you've got to play Luigi's Mansion 3 because it comes out, I guess, at the time of recording, it's out today. Um, but, yeah, like, my childhood memories because my, so my, my dad would play it, basically the game for me. I'd, like, watch him play, and, like, we'd kind of, like, play together, but I'd be basically be watching him play the game. And I, I remember that game spooked me for so, so bad for some reason. I mean... The, the aesthetic has gotten, like, lighter. Because the first one was actually, like, kind of, like, supposed to be kind of creepy. I enjoyed it a lot. I've, I've gone back and played it since, and I love the game. But, yeah, the third one comes out, and the reviews are great for it. So, if you're looking for a, for a spooky game to play this I'm Halloween. Excited. I've been playing the new Mario Kart levels, or the new Mario oh. Kart Cup just came out. Oh, uh, And it's for... all, like, Luigi's Mansion, the oh. pinball machine, all of my, like, favorite I'm, ones I'm that about... aren't in Mario yeah. Kart 8, and I'm so mad about it. I'm about to just... I'm getting tired of that game, honestly, because it's just, I'm realizing how much just random chance it is with a lot of the stuff for, like, yeah. the mobile stuff, because, like, it's, you only get high scores if you have, like, the right character for that map, and, like, so if you can't get Frenzy, then your chances of getting a high score are, like, way, way down. Yeah, but, I mean, for me, it's fun, because, like, my extent of video games is, like, yeah. Mario Kart and Sims. Yeah. So, like, it's fun, fun for me. It gives me, like, something to do that mm-hmm. isn't just, like on my phone that isn't like Candy Crush or yeah. like games that like Oh no it's fun to play I'll, I'll lay in bed sometimes just like yeah. play it it's a lot of fun but yeah just the, the amount of like random chance I'm like oh yeah this is a mobile game You're still game. beating me This so. is this is very much a mobile game yeah <laughs> Yeah but it's fun I mean it gives me something to do Yeah but um have you seen that Sims is coming out with a college expansion pack No I'm so excited it's supposed oh to come God. out either like Christmas time this year or like early next oh, year shit, my girlfriend's I'm so that. excited I've I love seen, the I've Sims. seen that one tweet where it's like Babe, are you mad at me? And she's like, No, no. I was like, Then why are you like drowning my sim right now in the swimming pool? <laughs> <That's> the <move. laughs> it's like, No, no reason. No, I'm like, not doing anything. Okay. <laughs> Puts a bunch of furniture in a room with only a fireplace. I remember my, my roommate's girlfriend last year. She was trying to do some kind of challenge with the sims. I think where you try to have like 100 kids. 100 kids in like one day, and it's just. Yeah. Like, or one something. character. Yeah, yeah. And like you. I don't. She was like so serious about it. It was, just, it was really weird because she would just talk about it so nonchalant. I was like, oh, 
I got divorced again. Like, it's just like, and I already have like these three kids and I can't find another guy because I'm pregnant right now. I was like, you're talking about the game, right? She goes, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's making sure. She's like, no, it's just my real life. And it's yeah, like, ah, oh, like, oh, okay. Oh, dope. Cool. <laughs> I can relate, you know, being pregnant, what not, <laughs> trying to find a hubby, you know, that, that's me. <laughs> Big mood. That was always, that's always the funniest thing to me is like, since I'm bi and I was with a girl for mm-hmm. a long time, like every time I was like, go to the doctor's office, they're like, are you sexually active? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, um, or is there any chance you're pregnant? I'm like, nope. And they're like, but if you're, I'm like, just think about it a little bit. I'm like, this is my girlfriend. Do you want to? <laughs> yeah. I've seen that one post where it's like, are you sexually active young man? He's like, yes, sir. He goes, up top. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I had to go in to get on birth control one time because mm-hmm. my acne was so bad. And she was like, is there any chance that you're currently pregnant? And I was like, nope. Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance at all. And she's like, well, like, then why do you need to be on birth control if, like, because at the time I wasn't sexually active. And I was like, well, I mean, my face was, like, yeah. bad, like, really yeah. bad acne. And she was like, okay, well, we'll, like, put you on birth control. But, like, why do you need it if you really aren't sexually active? And I was like, I... <laughs> The face. Hello. <laughs> hey. Yeah, no, I, I had really bad acne growing up too as a kid. That was. That it's was gotten rough. worse as I've gotten older. Like, now I'm getting, like, cystic acne all over my chin for, like, no reason. I mean, I think your face looks fine. Now it looks yeah, better, yeah. but, like, at the beginning of the school year, it was like. Well, I mean, stress does that too. Though. Yeah, I get, I get breakouts from stress sometimes too. I started using this oil that I got at Sephora, and it smells like tortilla chips. <laughs> I wish I was joking. It smells like a taco. I, literally, and my cat will sit there and, like, try and lick it off my face. I'm like, stop. <laughs> you're the cause of my acne now. <laughs> You're actively contributing to this process. Have you ever tried to bathe a cat? No. I have. Not, Not really. fun. Really? Sage smells so bad. So she has gingivitis because I got oh. her from a shelter that didn't take great care of her. Mm. So, like, her teeth are, like, disgusting. And yeah. she's still a kitten, so she's going to eventually, like, lose her teeth and get her adult teeth and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, oh, my God. But she'll bathe herself. And then she'll yeah. smell really bad because, like, her breath smells bad. Yeah. So then I had to try and give her a bath. Huh. But that was that was an adventure. I tried to bathe yeah. her in the kitchen sink because it's like deeper, and I was like, "Yeah, that's fine. It'll, it'll work." Yeah. No, she kept climbing onto my back oh, yeah. and like not smart. wanting to like deal with it. So I ended up putting her in the bathtub, and her favorite place to play is the bathtub. Mm-hmm. But now she's like terrified. Yeah, but like traumatic experience. I, yeah. I ended up with like scratches all over my back from her like trying to climb out like yeah. via like my shoulders. My, like, my ah, girlfriend's geez. hands are all marked up too yeah oh yeah we got the cat on her hands too yeah it's like all of my arms too i'm like ah great love having a cat little love marks i have i just got a new tattoo and sage Mm -hmm. keeps trying to mess with it and like pick at it because it's scabbing what is it a new tattoo of it's an addition to my grim reaper tattoo that i have very cool um, very festive yeah i added some like flowers and stuff to it oh that's adorable i love that yeah he's just a skateboarding grim reaper that's all holding up a peace sign yeah yeah, my that. my roommate last year drew it, and then I added some like dirt and yellow lilies to it mm-hmm. because I was like, eh, it's oh, cute. That's cute. I like that. It's very nice. Well, Rory, we're getting towards our time right now. This has been a lot of fun. Thank it you has. for joining me for the Sam Mo Show's Halloween Spooktacular. Thank you for having me. Before we go, there. I we gotta recommend some scary movies for for our listeners tonight. The Devil. The Devil. With M Night Shyamalan. It is so bad, but it is so good. That's the movie that you watch after you've watched like a couple of like really scary horror movies, and you're like. Okay, I need something to like laugh at. It's about a possessed elevator. I think I've seen that on Netflix. It's it's on Netflix. It's yeah. so bad, but it's so funny. Oh, so like it's it, trying to be a horror movie, but like mm-hmm. scary movie oh, style horror. Movie. But it's like, not like, but not intentionally. It's like yeah. really trying to be. Oh, jeez. Actually, the last horror movie I saw was really good. Was um, scary stories to tell in the dark. Mm, the movie. I haven't seen that yet. I really it was actually it. really good. I mean, it was PG-13, and I'm surprised what they got away with for PG-13 rating. Yeah. But, like, part of it was I was really more impressed because it wasn't, like, blood and gore and, like, cuts and everything. Like, it was actually just, like, really good, like, classic kind of psychological trauma, horror mm-hmm. kind of stuff. It's, it was good. I liked it a lot. I mean, it was – I wasn't, like, having a hard time sleeping, but I was just, like, walked out like, spooky movie. I like that. It was very it was very festive. I think that's a good one for, like, the Halloween time if you're not trying to go, like, too dark. One of my favorite movies ever, not just Christmas or not just Halloween time, but like ever. Yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. That oh, is yeah. a classic. I love that one too. Yeah. It's like the perfect movie to watch all of November mm-hmm. because like you just got through Halloween, you're about to go to Christmas. Yeah. It's it's that perfect transitional movie. Mm-hmm. I remember the one movie that scared the piss out of me growing up was The Haunting of Connecticut. I haven't seen that. I don't. I don't know. It was a lot for like a ten year old to to handle. Like it had to do. It, 
don't know. It, I mean, it, you if you want to watch it, uh, you should watch it. But it has to do a lot with like satanic stuff and like carved up bodies and. Oh, fun! Yeah, just it's, a typical it's, Saturday. I, uh, yeah, it was. It's just another <laughs> Tuesday in Connecticut. I don't know, but that movie like messed me up because like some of the bodies they worked on like came back to life and started like haunting them. There's one scene where the girls in the shower and they're like standing outside the shower, just like waiting for her to get out. And so like whenever I would take, a, I was like ten. I was like. I don't want to bring back the curtain. I don't want to bring back the curtain. I was so scared. Well, that scared. was me when I had that hole in my bathroom ceiling. Because yeah. I was like, somebody is up there watching me. Or there's like a dead body up there. Like, yeah. something is wrong. Why is this like this? Yeah, it's just the parent. I was like, I, I'm just going to sit in the shower and wait for the water to get cold. <laughs> I was just like, sit there and like, I, I'm not ready to come out. But yeah, no, oh, that movie messed me up as a kid. I recommend that one if you're trying to watch something more spooky. But if you're watching, trying to watch something a little more uh, festive, it's still spooky, but not like... Yeah. It's good horror. It's just, it's yeah. good. It's, it's like more like camp. Like, like it's literally scary stories tell in the dark. Like, yeah. Ooh, you know. Uh, one of my absolute favorites. Well, two of my absolute favorite horror movies, like mm-hmm. actually scary horror movies, are The Forest because it's a lot of that psychological thriller of like, was this person real? Did they really yeah. exist? Was it more of a spirit? Like, because they never tell you. Yeah. And then The Boy, which is like about a is that man. The, the, the little who, doll one? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I haven't seen that, but I heard it was pretty good. So good. It's like a supposed to be about a possessed doll um, that's possessed by the soul of a kid who was murdered. Mm-hmm. But like, it's I don't want to spoil it, but like, yeah. oh, it's so good. Things aren't as they seem. Well, Rory, thank you so much for coming on. Thank this you for having me. It was fun. It's good catching up with you. All right, so make sure to follow us on Twitter at Sam Mo Show if you want Sam more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a very spectacular Halloween.